So today I am doing a short video on what the Solark 15K uh, all-in-one whole home hybrid inverter that I use at my house here to run my entire system. Uh, what the, the iPhone app looks like or the desktop app here that you can monitor it and make adjustments to the settings uh, from anywhere you have an internet connection. So when you log in, it's going to look just like this. You'll have to set up your plant, which is a, a very, very easy process. It just takes probably five minutes. Um, and then every time you log in, it's going to show you, you're going to click on my plants up here in the left-hand corner, and then you can just click on whatever you named it. I named mine Unplugged Texan. So you click on that. And then it's going to bring up a snapshot of what is happening. So what I'm always looking for is this chart down here. And right now it is three o'clock. Um, in Texas, and we had a little bit of sun today, uh, mostly cloudy, a little bit of sun, but that's all I need with how big my solar array is to charge my batteries 100%. So right now, my batteries, as you can see, are at 100% state of charge. They're bringing in 84 watts. Um, this little orange box here in the middle represents the Solar 15K inverter. And as you can see, my solar panels are bringing in 869 watts, and basically because um, I'm already 100% charged, and you can see my house over here is only using 726 watts. So all I am bringing in for my solar panels is what is needed to cover the power for my home, to just leave a float charge on the batteries, and to run the Solar 15K. So that's it. If I ended up turning on a bunch of loads right now, the solar panels would immediately start bringing in more energy to be able to power all of that. But right now it's pretty much just dumping that excess energy that I don't need, which is why I need uh, to make my battery bank a lot bigger. Or I need to find some sort of dump load where when I have more solar energy than I need, which is nearly almost every day if it's not a storm or really heavy, heavy overcast. And even on heavy overcast days, I'm still able to get probably 50, 60 percent of charge on my batteries. So if you guys have any uh, recommendations on what I could do to just send a dump load, because the Solark 15K does have a uh, uh, an area, I believe it's on the generator port, where you can, if you end up getting fully charged on your batteries, it'll just send power through there, and I can go power whatever, a spa or another load. I don't know. I haven't really done a whole lot of thought in it, but I'm open to suggestions if you guys have any. Um, so this is the main thing that you can log in and see to be able to just see how you're how your system's operating at the moment. And as you can see, I'm bringing in 12 watts from the grid. That's what this is. I use the grid as backup. You're always going to see a little bit of a ping here if you're using the grid as backup, just to let you know that, hey, the grid is on standby here and will be used if you need it as the backup. I don't. I'm basically running 100%, not 100% off-grid, but I'm running off-grid until my batteries get down to a state of charge of 20%, and then I tell it to take from the grid until the sun comes up the next morning then the sun will charge my batteries and my house. And I'll have a link in the description if you guys are interested in downloading uh, a PDF of the entire, basically, schematic of my system, how it's wired, all the equipment I used. Actually, you can download that for free by going to solarpdfdownload.com, or you can just check the link in the description, and I'll have it there as well. So another section on this app that I like to look at is down here where I can chart it. And I like looking at the month. They have the day view, the month view, the year, or the total. I like looking at the month because that gives me a good snapshot of what's happening right now where I can easily highlight over today. And as you can see today, my solar panels brought in 27 kilowatt hours. I used 14.9 kilowatt hours total in my house. I did not export anything. I do not export at all to the grid. Um, I don't want to do that. Don't want to deal with any of the regulations. Um, and also it says I imported 0.2 kilowatt hours. That's from that small pinging that the grid does. And literally I, I get charged about 10 cents a kilowatt hour from my electric provider. So what 0.2 kilowatt hours is, what is that? Uh, two cents. So really I'm not using any electricity. Um, and then it says I discharged my batteries at 6.2 kilowatt hours. That was basically overnight from midnight to about, oh, I believe it was about 8.30 a.m when I finally started charging my batteries uh, with enough solar. Um, and then you can see that I charged my batteries so far today at 17.1 kilowatts and they are full. So we're not getting any more charge on that. Um, as you can see yesterday, I brought in 35 kilowatt hours. I used 34 kilowatt hours in my house, didn't export any, I imported 0.4. Again, that's four cents 
and I discharged 15 kilowatts and I charged at 14.3 and basically the same thing um, on the 14th of November. Um, I used a lot more power there because if you look at the 13th here, the 12th, the 11th and the 10th, we had extremely heavy uh, overcast with some rain. So we never saw we never saw the sun for four days straight and actually it was five days straight. So you can see I almost remained completely off grid. I used 36 cents. So I imported 3.6 kilowatts. I used about 36 cents of electricity on the 9th. On the 10th, I used uh, 12.8. So that was about $1.28 in electricity. And you can see I only brought in 12 kilowatt hours. That's terrible for my system. So that, that was a really, really heavily overcast day. And But as you can see, I decreased my usage as well. So remember, the red is my home usage. So when it gets really cloudy or rainy, I drop my usage back. I don't run my water distiller, which is a heavy appliance. I try to not run my washer and dryer. Um, I try to maybe keep the thermostat a little bit cooler, maybe not run the heater as much. So that's the stuff I try to do to try to limit my usage. And then as you can see, once we got sun back, which was on the 14th, I ran a bunch more appliances because um, you can see my my load went up to 60 or what, 40 kilowatt hours on the day. And then I can go scroll back even further if I wanted to and see all this. You can see from the 16th, 16th, 17th, and this is October. I'm off grid, off grid, off grid, off grid completely. And then as you can see over here, I used a lot. Um, I brought in 41 kilowatt hours. I believe that day was because I was worried that there was gonna be a major thunderstorm that night. So I just grid charged my batteries 100% because I had a lot of clouds the day before, as you can see by my solar panels only bringing in 14.8 kilowatts. So as you can see from all this, I'm off grid really about 85 to 90, 94% roughly of the time. And I use the grid as backup, and that's why I really need another set of batteries. If I had another 30 kilowatts of battery storage, um, I would be going back to grid a lot less, probably be more off grid 95% of the time. Um, so moving on, if you click on the day here, I like looking at this as well, too, because that gives you a bell curve of what's happening um, with your system today. So as you can see, when the green jumps up above my usage, which was around uh, 7.40 a.m., I was bringing in 745, 813 watts from my solar panel. So the sun was just coming up and actually it was pretty hazy and foggy today too. Um, but I was only using 425 watts that early in the morning. So wasn't hardly using anything. And that was really the seven refrigerators I have plugged in, but it's getting cooler at night now. So the compressors aren't running that much um, overnight. And as you can see, the green is the solar panels. So my solar is going up and you can tell it's bumpy here because it's been cloudy all all day today for the most part and the sun just popped out for a little bit here um right around noon and that's when that's when you see look at my 15,000 watts i was charging at and my system is a 19,000 watt system uh size solar array so um i haven't seen 19,000 watts come in i think the highest i've seen is about 17 175 17,500 watts um and that's because of my angle this time of year on my solar panels aren't perfect they're at a fixed tilt so that this is a great place to just see how your system's doing where your loads are or how big your load is throughout the day as you can see the uh, the red is my load right so solarc 15k does 15,000 watts actually 12,000 watts when you're considered off grid running on batteries only so i like to stick with 12 so i don't ever want to see this spike above 12 12,000 watts this red line because that's what my home is using so and you can see the biggest spike i had was right here which was just a little under 5,000 watts so, and I'm running, you know, a heater, a mini split heater, um, my water heater, but it's heat pump, washer dryer, things like that. And you can see, I never have come close to the max. The max is really up here at the 12,000 watt range is where I would overload my Solark 15K. So if you have the right appliances, um, this thing is big enough for any house and I'm running two different 240 volt pumps. So um, that's really what I wanted to show you, at least on this part on how the system works. Um, but you can also, to change the settings on it, you can click on over here on the left on equipment. This is, now this is what I think they could do a better job on. It's not very, um, user-friendly to change the settings, at least to find it, but here's how you do it. If you ever wanted to change, say you wanted your batteries to get, you know, grid charged really quick. Um, or like, like for me, for instance, the other was a couple of weeks ago when I was worried about a big thunderstorm. I wanted my batteries to have 100% charge going into that storm just in case it knocked out the power and it gave me as much time as I needed um, to ride it out. 
not only that night, but what if it was cloudy the next day? So, so do that or change. Let's say you don't want your batteries to run to all the way down to 20%. You want them to run to, let's say, only down to 50%. But you can click on equipment here. And then the inverter is what you want to click on. And then once you click on inverter, it brings you to this screen. You click on these three little dots over here and you click on parameters setting. And then once you go there, then you'll see the different areas you can change um, on the settings. Now, when you first set this thing up, give Solark a call. Let them just kind of look at all your different settings and make sure you're set up right. And then you can go to battery settings here, grid settings, system work mode. That's where I do most of all of my work. Now, once you do the initial setting up with the battery and the grid um, and the basic settings, really all you're going to do is mess with the system work mode. And even this battery settings, that goes really quick. And Solark will help you with that. Also, the grid settings, same thing. Um, but let's go into system work mode because that's what I wanted to show you. And then you can see if you're going to do grid selling, you can click on here and then enter whatever information you want, how much power to send back. I'm going to do limited power to load. That's what I do. Um, and the, the way I use this is my house uses solar as a priority to run my home. And then it uses batteries after that if there's not enough solar. And then after that, it will go to the grid if it needs it. And where I set that up at is down here. So you can see you've got different times. You've got time one, you've got time two, time three, time four, time five, and time six. And you can set these for all different um, settings. So for instance, for time one, that is from midnight. That's what that zero, zero, zero is all the way until time two, 8 a.m. So from midnight to 2 a.m., I'm allowing my batteries to be charged at 10,000 watts and then all the way to a state of charge where basically I'll allow the batteries to go down to 20%. So you can change this. If you don't want your batteries to ever get below 50%, then do that and then it'll grid charge. And then 8 a.m., I have the same settings at time three, which is, what is that? Uh, 3 p.m. But when I want to grid charge really fast, for instance, it's three o'clock right now. So if I wanted to charge my batteries up really fast, I would change, let's see, where is 3 p.m. at? That's right here. So I would change this to, let's say, my battery's already charged, so I can't even show you right now, but I would just change this setting right here to 50%, and then it will instantly start charging my batteries all the way up to 50% um, until we got to the next setting, which is uh, time four. What is that? 12, so that's 10 o'clock right there. So that's how it works. It's very easy to do. And Solark will walk you through all of this as well. So it's awesome that you have that kind of customer support with them. But that is really what I wanted to show you on this app. While it's not, I think, I think it can be better done, at least a better user interface. And definitely getting to this system work mode should be easier than what it is. But besides that, this app gives you everything you need. So hopefully this, this video has helped you all. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you want to see tips like this on the Solark 15K and actually other solar equipment that I'm going to be testing out as well. Uh, make sure you like the video as well, and I'll see you in the next one.